Ooh. Mm. Hope you guys enjoy it. So what she looks like at the end of the finished product. It is amazing. I'm starting to feel like Mark Weens now. If you guys watch Mark Weens. Hello and welcome back everybody. Welcome back to another video. In my kitchen this time. That's right. Today, since we've had an epic session with uh, some of the smaller nannies the other day, I'm going to share with you how I prep uh, the nannies, uh, the small, the smaller snappers, and how to cook them whole as well. My One of my personal favorite dishes. So, uh, since you guys have been requesting for those who uh, may like to try something new or just interested in how I prep it, pretty much, very simple. I'll show you what I usually do. Okay, guys. Now I've got a two. I've got here. I've got a few scales around. I've been prepping a little bit, and um, I've already prepped some first, just to get a head start. I'm not going to show you everything that they're filling. I'm just going to show you one or two fish. How I usually do it. And yeah, the rest is pretty much the same. Repetitive. So let's get into it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. If you're uh, one of those who like the just normal uh, catch, clean, or cook. And uh, yeah, stay with me, guys. Let's get into it. So you can see, I've got two, uh, two of the smaller ones here. The smaller, the better. They're just a. Uh, this one's probably about 45, this one's about 42. Uh, I prepped some earlier. And uh, don't mind the messy kitchen, guys. It's not about the kitchen, okay? And some of the fish in the esky. Yeah, yeah, I prepped earlier. So, um, what I usually do is uh, wash the fish. And this is the only time I'll be washing the fish. When they're still full and whole, so the uh, fresh water does not contaminate the flesh. Our uh, fresh water from the tap has chlorine in it. And if you wash the fillets, like I've seen some people do, you sterilize it one way or another. It's got chemicals, you know. So we'll try to keep it as fresh as possible as it was from the sea, okay? Uh, if you have sea water, if you want, if you really need to wash it, Use the sea water from where it came from is the best way to do it. Uh, that's my opinion, okay, guys. Uh, you know, it's fresh fish, man. You know, I've seen um, I have seen those who um, uh, one of my some of my family members. You know who you are if you guys are watching this. <laughs> they use they use soap, yeah, dishwashing soap. Yeah. They said they scrubbed the fillers. Oh man, that was that was murderous to my heart. Eh? That was murderous, man. I was like, what the hell are you doing? You know, it... yeah. soap. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, uh, they have completely sterilized it to the point where you know I don't think it tastes natural the way it should. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, straight from the esky. You know, they still got a bit of that slime. So then a bit of blood here and there. We just give it a quick wash under the tap. So I like to do, this is how I do it anyway, guys. You guys can do it any way you guys like. At the end of the day, you can do it however you like. No one can tell you what you can or can't do with a legal fish, especially the legal fish you catch, okay? If you feel comfortable in one way or the other, that's, Solely up to you. This is just a personal choice. This is how I do it. So, uh, fill it. Now that all the slime is off, it doesn't slide backwards and forward when you're working. So, uh, you remember, if you don't wash the slime off, you got a wooden board like this, you know, you're trying to fill it and sliding around, there's a good chance your knife is gonna slip or somewhere, somewhere, you're gonna cut yourself. So, you're your safety is always paramount, okay? Just remember, no fish is worth your safety. Always practice safety first. Because when it's happened, believe me, it's happened to me. Don't want it to happen to anyone. So, straight up. 
there, back. I'm only taking my time, not rushing it. Try to enter the backbone, go through the back. Do it like that. I like to turn the fillet the other side. I like to have the fillet on the other side so it, it keeps the fish in a flat motion so it's easier to fill it. And then I'll come back around to finish it off. So, always cut away from me if you can. See the knife is inside the fish, so if the knife slips, it will go the other way. Don't put your hand here while you're doing it. I've seen people do it. Dangerous. Yeah. I've learned that lesson myself as well, personally. Straight. I always keep the knife clean there. Feel it right behind the backbone. Get as close as you can to the backbone. I'm not a pro at this. Save the pin bones. Now the snappers, nanny guys, they don't have much meat around the rib cages, so you don't get much recovery. Yeah. Not like the trout. Trout and uh, those that got a thick meat layer along the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh, this, uh, rib cages here. You see, they come straight off, fall straight off. And yeah, not much recovery there, but even when you're pretty close. Trout, you get good recovery. Some of the rounder fishes. So keep yeah, turn it up, keep it up upright so it doesn't get dirty. The fish, the fillets does not get contaminated. Come around under here. So with the pin bone. Around. So you're not much recovery as a nice slice through. Yeah. You get just that little bit. Straight down. Through the belly side there you go see pretty close to the uh, rib cages and there's not much recovery there either I might I'll see if I might take some of these um the wings yeah I'm in the air skip for now after every fish I like to uh, just quickly rinse the board to get any slime or any excess blood that's come out of the fish it's nice and uh, not, it's not slippery. Right, knife. If you keep everything uh, clean and not bloody or slimy, you don't have to worry about using soap like some of my family members I've seen doing. <laughs> so, skin. Straight down. Oh, just another, just remember guys, a nice, a nice, um, a nice sharp knife helps a lot and a little bit on the belly here you know all the snappers and trout though or most of the dismersal fish have their little belly layer of skin there it's a bit green you take it or take the first layer off like that see just peel it off there you go okay let it sit let it sit on its uh on its um, scale, I mean uh, on its skin, just take the pin bones off. Now you don't have to do these steps. You know, this is just how I do it because I, I have uh, kids who like uh, to eat fish as well with me, and I make try to make sure the best as I can to get all these little fine bones out. Because the last thing you want is the kids swallowing bones, and that is can be. Uh, daunting for them and they'll probably never touch fish ever again after a bad experience. Peel the bin bones, make sure all this is just the blood and from the fish veins. Once you cook it, it's all just pure white. All right, looks good. No bottom bones. Obviously the fillet top, bin bones. There you go, nice beautiful fillet. Yeah. Straighten here for now. 
I know I never touch, I never wash it anymore when it's in the fillet. Never wash it anymore. Fill it off. Uh, I only if for me if I really in doubt when the time comes or if if it's a bit dirty, I wash it right before I cook. When I take it out of the freezer and I need to cook it. Uh, and I will f feel like I need to wash it. I'll wash it once then and then I'll cook it straight away So uh, the le less it sterilizes the meat So straight through, skid Nice belly Then Peel the belly off. It comes off quite easy. Once it comes off it's nice and clean and white Beautiful. I quite like this part when you deep fry it or something like that. It's nice and crunchy. The belly part of the snapper is quite nice. Some fish, the belly part is quite strong. It's not not that great eating. Like uh, the barra, barra money, the, the bellies are quite strong and uh, potent. Some people might like it, but I don't like it. It's too strong for me. Uh, Spanish mackerel is the same as well. You catch Spanish and the, the belly. The belly piece is very, very strong. That's why most, uh, when you go to um, fishing shops, and you, you barely see that belly piece down here being sold. It's always from uh, the bottom loin and the top loin only. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Try my hands there. Make sure you don't uh, try to con not to contaminate with fresh water as much as possible. Keep the fillet as clean and as natural as you possibly can. This way when we cry a it, it stays like this for a long time. We go to two, we'll move on to that one in a minute, how I prep that one for cooking, okay? Moving over, moving over to here, I've got some uh, cry back bags ready. What I usually do, straight in the cry back size, like that. One piece. Okay. Pretty much any way you like. Good. So usually these smaller uh, nannies, you know, you can one piece per meal. It's perfect. So you got nothing wasted. <laughs> and um, yeah. Um, so you do this way. It stays clean, simple. You know, you do less and cleaner, more effective. Back. Just get all the air bubbles out, as far as much as possible. Just the natural product as it is. There you are. Just make sure it's fully sealed if you've got a cryovac machine. Oh, yeah. If you do want to treasure your fish for a long time, I highly recommend you get a cryovac machine like this. Because um, they state that it lasts for well over six months in the freezer. And still remain pretty fresh. I was a bit, I was a bit skeptic, and I, uh, I have tried. I have left one fillet, and uh, left it for a year, one whole year as it is. And I took it out to try, and it, the quality is. I was surprised how good it is. It's still pretty, very, very good. Once it's been frozen for a year, because in this way you prevent freezer burns or other contaminants and stuff like that. You know, so. Um, once it's frozen, when you take it out of the freezer, it looks exactly like this. Yeah, it's great. If you obviously you all will know that if you just freeze a whole fish or just a fillet and just chuck it in the freezer, it gets freezer burn. You know, you, you get a lot of uh, frost over your the, the meat. Yeah, and then uh, uh, it doesn't taste really good when you cook it. Eh? It's old and stale. And that's only after a few weeks. This one you do like this, and it lasts for months. Over six months, like I said, I've tried it over a year and it's still amazing. Um, so yeah. There you go. One whole fish, ready to go. Beautiful. Fillets are almost very similar, identical. Nannies. There you go. Keep in mind guys, you guys, 
this is just how I do it. You can do it any way you like. So you can just chuck it in the freezer, and, you know, the fish. <laughs> yeah, it's fine with that. Yeah. So we put that in the freezer. These are some of the ones we earlier. See, CT, try to name it. It's beautiful, it stays nice and uh, frozen. Yeah. Beautiful. No freezer burns. Nothing. Last for a long time. Oh, the nannies. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Alright, so uh, that's the clean. Obviously, uh, there's a bit much from the, the session, so I'll do the catch on a separate video and I'll do the um, clean and cook in this video. Uh, so, um, now we'll move on to the other nanny and I'll show you how uh, I prep this one to cook whole. Usually if I get if I get a bit lazy I'll put it in the oven. Yeah. Or uh, on the barbie, it seems to be the flame on the barbie on the hot plate it seems to taste, I find it to be uh, taste better but uh, a bit slack, I'm just going to chuck it in the oven. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the smaller ones, so I'm going to need this. Uh, the smaller ones are better, beautiful weed. Wash all that slime off first. Yeah. So it's not slippery, so you can prep it. Okay. Keep it through the knife. Uh, straight down. I like to keep the head in there because the head, the head adds all the yummy juices and flavor and everything that adds to the uh the sauce you know say once it's cooked it accumulates a bit of sauce and that creates a beautiful um flavor to the fish so we're gonna try and we're gonna butterfly it just go through there like that Back. So what we're trying to do is we don't want to cut the bottom part of the belly. We want to keep that connected because we're going to butterfly it. This guy. a bit difficult around the rib cages. Not enough um not enough meat yet. The smaller they are the more thinner the meat between the rib cages even when you're so close to it. But it's just the type of fish, the anatomy of the fish anyway. So you know that on top of the wings of the fish there's two over over interlocking bones here. One goes over another like that. So what you do is you just put your knife in through, sever it like that. See the interlocking bone? Put the knife all the way up and then there's the other bone underneath. Cut, bring your knife underneath that interlocking bone. And then you cut it straight out. See? Alright. That way you don't blunt your knife trying to chop through the um through that. Some people you go through and move this collar and you blunt your knife. You do that one. Do the same at the end. There you go. As you can see. Put a knife straight. See the interlocking bone right there? So I'm just putting it in there, see? Yeah, sever it. Come around. Up to the top of the other underneath interlocking bone. Straight out. Yeah. Just sever the cartilages, the bellies, and now she comes. See? Simple. Fry this. It's quite nice, fried. Yeah, cut it in the middle. Yeah, give it a quick clean and you just chuck it in the deep fry, man. It's quite, it's beautiful as it is. Yeah. Once you're deep fried, all these scales, you just peel it off. Yeah, no need to scale it. Leave that there for now. There you are. And test one's out. Now wash, keep your hands clean. 
don't contaminate the uh, inner flesh. Your hands are full of guts. Around. Straight through it, butterfly. Over the collar. Thin rib cages. Get as close as you can. I'm not proud of this, guys. Some of you guys will definitely do a better job. Yeah. Yeah. This is just me just like to do it this way. You don't have to do it this way, guys. This is just an extra job, you know. You can just take the filler off and do it um, as it is. There you go. I'm gonna need the head. The brains for the head. Just break it. Should just break right off. Since it's just a small fish. Like that. Now you can give this a quick wash. We just need it for the flavor. All the brains and stuff like that. Head. Wings. They'll go under. Just have it connected like that. You know, you don't have to have it connected. I just, um, you can uh, cut the pin bones out. I usually do it when the kids pull the pin bones out. Or I just leave it. For me, this is just for me, so I just leave it. I'm gonna season the fish. Do a little bit of season. Always remember to season. Yeah, let it sit for a bit. Yeah. There you are. Okay. There you go. Need these bones in here. We'll just remove the frame. And she's ready to go. So we just need to go um, go to the garden, grab some uh, herbs and spices, and. Bring it back. So, this is tight. Yeah, just dump it in the fridge for a bit while we uh, go and sort out herbs and spices. In the fridge. Okay. So, if you know me, guys, if you've seen my previous cooking episodes, I love full of flavour cooking when it comes to my fish. Uh, oh, I'm gonna need some basil. Uh, all these overgrown herbs. Oh, lemon basil guys, smells so good. Uh, I'm gonna use the lemon basil and uh, sweet basil yeah, for this dish. Uh, so it's good. It's got a great aroma. And it makes fish taste amazing. Gonna get some good angles overgrown a bit. It's getting too big, it needs pruned. Just remember guys, if you guys have basil like these, they like to be pruned. The more you prune it, the more it grows. That's just how uh, that's just how the plant works. Got some basil there. Um, yeah, a bit of mint. Mint there. Good. Newborn Thai basil. See, it's starting to bolt to seed. Get the, get the flowers off as stuff on. It's, um, Sweet basil. Yeah. The more you prune it, the more it gets bushier. Yeah. Uh, there's my lime tree. Um, one lime should do it. Oh, this one's not too bad. This one's it's got good color. Take this one. This one should do it. Lemon grass. Can't have the dish without lemongrass. It's one of the best. There's homegrown lemongrass back 
Look for the bigger roots. Uh, yeah, very expensive this stuff. If you guys have ever been to the shop to buy lemongrass, my god. Three dollars. Three dollars each man. So this mesh, this meal probably need I need two, two would probably do it. Yeah, yeah it's only one 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 fish. Okay. Moving on to some Kefla lime leaves. Need a few of those. Yep. Just take, pluck a few off. Like the more you take off, the more it will just grow back. That's all we need. A few. Trim them in there. Now ready. Got some coriander here. Some will hate it, some will love it. I love it, so uh, uh, I don't have a lot at the moment growing. So I'm just gonna take some leaves, just for the aroma. Mm -hmm. You guys are wondering how I cook my food. Weed, this is how I do it. Try to reduce as much cost as possible the amount of the cost of living these days it's skyrocketing these living herbs you want to buy them they and you cook them every day you eat as much fish as me it adds up to a lot and i would rather just save it on bait and fuel so you can get out catch the fresh fish yeah and that's all i'll need Oh yeah, obviously spring onions. Now we're gonna need we're gonna need the whole stalks. Yeah, if you're only after garnish, you can just cut a bit like uh, what we've been doing. Just cut a few of the leaves just for garnish, so it will keep growing. But for me in this dish, I need the whole stalks. So let's cut deep. Need everything. Need everything. The white gives it a nice, good flavor to it as well. Yeah. Straight in there. Just grab some of the bigger ones. Uh, get this one down here. Nice big one. <sighs> yeah, nice big one. Tender and juicy. Yeah, she's beautiful. Okay, I think that's all we need. That'll do it. All right, here we go. The hers, mint, and I'm gonna need a few tomatoes to help improve the sauce. Fortunately, I tried to grow these tomatoes, and uh, yeah, my place has just got too much bugs, man. Pests everywhere. They just killed the plant. I can. Just grow herbs and maybe a few selected vegetables like bok choy and all that, but anything else, I mean, caterpillars and all that, they just decimate everything. Hey, pests, but uh, I got some. Um, yeah, look at my previous ginger harvest, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Get to about 30, 40 bucks a kilo. I never had to buy ginger ever again. <laughs> all right, moving on. Getting off topic. Here's this one vegetables and and santoku knife so vegetables so there's no contamination of meat and vegetables okay what we do get this spring out a quick wash on the bottom Good. Nothing's gonna kill you. Yeah. Go. There. Yeah. 
coriander, quick rinse, coriander. Did you get any dirt or anything like that off? If there's any bugs or anything like that on there, they won't survive 180 degrees or over 100 degrees temperature. Nothing will survive. Just eat the bugs as well. <laughs> yeah. Good aroma. Basil. Just pick the leaf off. Lemon basil as well. Just pick the leaf off. Put that at the bottom. Just all home job, guys. Nothing professional. This is what we. How I cook at home. Okay, it's finally chopped all together. There. Get the lime leaves. And the lemongrass. Super expensive stuff, guys. The lemongrass. $3 each. Imagine that. You go and buy the shop, you don't believe me, you're gonna have a look. It's about there. And for one. And uh that's like six bucks here. Imagine the amount of fuel you can save from it. Yeah, yeah, living grass. The amount of fuel you can save from six bucks is three liters. And the fuel is two dollars a liter. It's three liters will get me several kilometers in my boat. Or if you've got those big 200s, I'll give you 10 seconds of full throttle. Apologize for the lighting guys. I'm in my kitchen and the light bulb's yellow as well. So the lighting might not be real great Hope you guys are able to uh, see it. Okay now, The lime leaves are a bit tough so you want to get it finely grated and we're gonna use it in the pesto and mortar again similar using the pesto and mortar Just Cut that That'll do it some garlic. Can't definitely need fish for garlic. Fish and garlic, guys. The way this this type of method, this cooking. Fish and garlic. Can't go wrong with fish and garlic. Gonna need it. It's gonna be full of flavour. Five S's. Lime leaf, Kevlar. Straight in. Lemongrass. Okay. Blitz it up a bit. I'm trying to get them extract the flavors here, guys. You know I me, mean? I love my five S's. Full of flavor food. I like to do my fish justice, whether it's crab, prawn, fresh meat, lobsters, you name it. There's no right or wrong in this, I'm just going to do this straight in. Two tomatoes. I'm going to blitz it up, remember, so big fine chunks is fine. You can get fancy and get small and fine if you like. This is just how I do it. Yeah, about two would be good. Tomorrow adds that sauce once it's infuses with the brains of that fish. It's gonna be amazing. In goes the herbs as well. We're making a sauce here for it. That's gonna cook with the fish. This is how I usually do it with my fish. Forgive the uh, the messiness of the kitchen, how I cook it guys. This is a reality. Okay, fresh line from the garden. Just gonna bruise them a little. So, there's nothing. It's gonna kill. Oh, look at that line, man. Straight from the garden. Right? Beautiful. Nice and juicy. Oh, yeah. Doesn't that look great, guys? Sweet, sour, salt, spice equals sexy
bit of fish sauce running out. Don't forget if you're using fish sauce, squid brain's the best. Um, yeah, it isn't about. Depending on how much you're doing too. About there. This will lift lift it up to next level guys. This is my bird's eye chili from the garden. Crushed bird's eye chili. Very spicy. If you don't like very super spicy, just use a few chili flakes or a few chili powders, that's it. For me, I like I don't mind I like a more mild to a high heat spice. Add a bit. Um the banana leaves cooks moistly in there and it's, it cooks at a different level. It's it's great, but unfortunately don't have it, so I've got to use, I just use aluminium foil. Head. Oh, hold on. There's no right or wrong, guys. You feel it. So what you can do is uh, you can also take the scale off as well if you want, but for me I just do it this way because I'm going to fill the innards with the sauce. Everywhere like that. Just looking beautiful, guys. Oh, it smells so good. The herbs. Okay. That's it. Yeah, so add some flavor to it. There's no right or wrong, guys. The head we just need a bit of for the. Uh, for the brains, yeah. you know, like when they when they make uh, um, prawn bisque or crab bisque or prawn sauce, they always throw the shells and heads and everything in there. That's to get all the brains and butter from the crabs and prawns. So, same principle here, getting all the brains and so on. Okay. Okay, there you go. She's looking great, isn't she? Since it's going into the... Come on, oh, on you. Since it's going into the oven, there won't be any burning. Yeah, it'll cook moistly. Right. That's another way. Yeah. Close him up. Do one fold first. Now, we need to secure him so he doesn't, um, we need to secure so the sauce doesn't leak. Alright guys, so this, this is what I do. Now we just put on double layer of the fold so the aluminium foil doesn't, the sauce doesn't leak out. Now because it's, you're in the oven, it's going to be steaming. So if you don't puncture these holes, it's going to pop somewhere and if it pops underneath, or something, the, all the juice will come out over the pan and it just not, it would just be no good. So what I like to do, this is from a uh, trial and error, this is what it's, this is, it's happened to me, that's why I found out that this way, put one at the end, one small one there, the steam will come out there, put one over here. Yeah, there's two small incision holes there, when the steam fills up, it'll find a way to escape on top. Or else it will explode like a balloon and then you lose all your sauce. Uh, well, so I'll probably do 250. You can do 180, but uh, I'm going to speed up a bit. 250 for about maybe 15 minutes. Yeah. If if you got time, which I don't have, if you got time, leave it overnight so you, know, you infuse with the fish. And then you cook it when it's ready. But uh, this will be ready for uh, dinner tonight. And... Um, I think uh, I think 250 for about 15 20 minutes. You, know, you can always open up a little bit and check the fish. Uh, yeah, that's fine as well. Don't touch anything in the oven. There you go. Wow. Up beautifully. Yeah. All right. Just set an alarm. Time. Now I'll check back in between 15 25 minutes. <coughs> 15 minutes later. Okay, everyone. Ignore the noise. The family's back. I try to keep it as quiet as possible. You have it. Oh, got a bit of sauce at the front there. A bit of sauce. Remember what I was saying about the sauce? See? The alfoil was meant to has caught the sauce, which is good. 
the nana dripping around the around the bowl. That's good. We want to maintain that sauce in the fish. Let's have a look. All right, it's probably going to be a bit hot. This fingers are meant for burning, like those the pros say. Look at all that sauce, huh? Ooh, okay. Now we're going to try and catch that sauce onto um, a bowl later. So we'll remove the top layer, keep the bottom layer uh, as it is, so that we don't lose any of that yumminess. Oh, look at that. How's that look? It's a bit hot, the bowl's a bit hot. Let's turn it around. Santoku. Beautiful, look how juicy though that is, just falling off. Mm. Mm. Oh. That is a difficult part. Usually I just eat like this when served, but I just want to show you guys how it is. I'm going to try to remove it, which is a bad idea. It's going to break. Uh, it shouldn't be doing this, but I'll do it just to show you guys. There you go. Oh, look at that. Beautifully cooked. Juicy, tender fish brains. So you've got the sauce underneath, and you can. I usually just eat like this and dip the meat in the sauce. Yeah. Oh my god! Here we are, just right here. Sweet, sour, and salty, guys. It's amazing. So I'll show you how I usually, how I usually, um, I usually eat it. Grab a bit of meat. Bit of sauce there. It's really hot. I'm starting to feel like Mark Weens now, if you guys watch Mark Weens. Mm. Mm. Oh man. <laughs> Sweet, sour, salty, spice, and sexy at the same time. Amazing, guys. Now, usually I just eat it straight off like this, serve it and eat it, and just leave it in like this. Uh, but what you can do is just uh, take it out, um, put the sauce into a bowl, uh, drain the sauce into a bowl and then um, you just dip the sauce in. Exquisite, guys. Serve it. You know, you can serve it in however you like. You know, rice, fresh vegetables, potatoes. You know, whatever you feel like to go with it. You know, most of the time I just do it like this with a bit of rice. Or you can do like you know, if you want to, if you're not lazy, and you feel like something different, maybe like a noodles, lemon chili noodles or something, you know, and serve it together with that. Put the meat over it. Number one, guys. Mm. Hope you guys enjoy it. So what it looks like at the end of the finished product. It is amazing. Give it a try. If you guys are um, not sure what to cook for your next small fish dish for the small snappers. For me, I'll probably get two meals out of that and that's it. If I'm really hungry, I'll probably just finish it all. Just wipe the whole thing out. There you go guys, hope you guys enjoyed it, and as always, if you watched this far, you like to see more cooking videos, leave a thumbs up before you go, subscribe if you like to see more, and as always, till the next hot fishing session, I don't know where I'm going to be next, I'll see you then, and I'll see you in the next video, bye bye.